Welcome to my ranking for Horner, an amazing band, and I've already recorded this video, I did it with the green screen, and then I just realised the sound was fucked up. So I, this is my second time recording it, so if I'm a bit quicker, then that's the why, because I'm already pissed off. That makes for good content. So, Horner ranking, Horner, who are they? What are they? Why should I fucking care? They are a, um, I, I want to say pagan kind of black metal band, but... They've got raw elements in the early stuff, and they've got kind of punky elements in some of the albums as well. Some atmosphere here and too, uh, here as well. So they've got a lot of variety of sound. Um, so I'd say it's a band for anyone to check out. Fantastic band with different vocalists, different areas of the band. So if you don't like one era, you might like another. So check out all the albums before you start pissing and moaning. But yeah, I'm going to talk to you about my favourites, my least favourites, and everything in between. So before I do, pop down below how you rank Horner's albums from your least favourite to your favourite. Let me have a little swig. Ah! Let's get on with my least favourite. And I'm going to butcher the fuck out of all these, just like I just did. Sotahuto is my least favourite. Um, with Corvus on the vocals, who I think is a fantastic vocalist uh, from Total Self-Hatred. Love that band. Heard that band before, Horner, which is you know, rare. Uh, but... This is the kind of punky style that I'm not big into. I think the album's good, but it definitely stands out as my least favourite. There's nothing inherently wrong with it. It's just not a sound I gravitate towards. Um, so it stands out like a sore thumb for me on the discography. Um, so it's just not, not my kind of style. I like the atmospheric stuff, the pagan stuff, raw stuff. Um, punky stuff, eh, it's fine. If you like that kind of shit... You might like it, you know, if you like the mid cross punky dark front stuff or, I don't know, Impaled Nazarene, that kind of shit. Not my kind of forte, but if you like that stuff, this album is for you. But it's last for me, so fuck you. Next up is Cooler Men Kirijo. Kirijo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the latest album by Horner. One with the hand, the fucking cripple hand coming out. Take my strong hand. It's. Fucking great, you know, from here on out, I love these albums. This is a great album, I love the implementation of the clean vocals in here. Fairly long album. Um, vocals are knock it out of the park. I like this album quite a lot, so having it low kind of pains me, but they just have too many good albums, you know. Horner's just a, a beast of a band, they have too many good albums. So something has to come fairly low on the list, but just, just know, this is a great newer album for a kind of black metal band. A lot of them kind of phone it in, this isn't phoned in. This is put together with care, and I love it, but not as much to put it higher than some of the classics. So, moving on. Moving on, we have Hanging Tull, Tullet. Tullet, with a mullet. I love the art on this one, like kind of, that kind of evil Casper-like fucking ghost-like figure on the on the cover. I want to like this more. Um, it's kind of, I don't want to say paint my numbers, but no, no, no riffs stand out as like the best in their career. It's all just really good, you know, black metal. Nothing's like phenomenal. Um, that's, I can't say much for this album. I don't know. Every time I listen to it, I want to like it more than I do. Um, but there's nothing inherently wrong with it. And every time I have a blast with the album, I think it's a good album. Uh, and everyone should check it out and you might have it higher than me, but it just doesn't grip me like a lot of the other albums. And that's all I can say for it. Like, Maybe on re-listens or re-listens it will grab my balls and squeeze them into submission. But for the moment, eh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's coming here. It's pretty good. Next up is How Dank Lamed Mailer. That's right, the um the sophomore album. Wow. A raw sophomore one coming fairly low. You're out your fucking rocker. I like this one quite a lot. I like the raw sound of the early albums, but I don't think it holds a candle to Cody. It just fucking doesn't. Um, Werewolf's on this. I love Werewolf. His uh, vocals are fantastic. But on this album, his vocals aren't the best. I don't think they're as good as on Cody or as on the follow-up, which he sounds fucking ferocious on. Um, but on this one, I don't know. And then there's the whole end section, which goes on and on and on. It's just kind of... It's like, just take that out. Um, aside from that, yeah, no, the album's actually really good. A um, couple of nitpicks here and there, but a fucking great sound, great rawness, evil energy, but I just think the debut does it 
a lot better. So you'll see that later on. Next up, who we got? Askel. Askel, the one with the flaming buildings and the black and white cover. I love this cover. Holy shit, this art. Oh. This art is bloody amazing. Bloody amazing. The atmosphere on this album, palpable. From here on out, these albums are fucking tense. I love them. Um, the atmosphere, the brooding nature of this album, how evil it is. I love it. I want it higher. I'm annoyed that it's not higher because I love this album. So from here on out, I love this album. But yeah, this one, oh boy. Mm, mm, mm. That's Mama Sugar. I love it. Next up is Sudan Table, which I had number one for a long time. This one is different in the catalogue because it's a lot more cleaner sound. It's more heavier. It's probably the heaviest album they've done. It pops. It's kind of more like a death metal album <laughs> the way it's like produced. But no, I love it. Yeah. Uh, some people might not like the fact that it's not as raw as some of the other albums, but you know, fuck you. I like it. I like it how it stands out among the crowd. It's Black Sheep. I love it. The riffs fucking kill. It's heavy as fuck. I could easily put it at number one. I did have it at number one. Werewolf's vocals. <sighs> But it's here. So what's next? <gasps> Number four is Envartnags. This is the classic, the big one with a guy like on the album cover, which you all know, you all love. This is catchy. This is catchy black metal and raw as fuck. So if you thought that was too clean, then this has your balls covered. Um, uh, yeah. I, what, what can I say about this one? This is the classic. It's got the catchiest songs on. Um, it's got the rawest atmosphere, but I, every time I listen to it, I kind of go, that was pretty damn good. Bit overhyped, but pretty damn good. And then I listen to some of the other ones higher, and I'm like, yeah, these are better. So, uh, I'm not going to go with the crowd on this one, and uh, it's number four. Number three is Koti Yudiskan Nusa, the debut, which I think is just flawless. The raw atmosphere, evil energy. Oh, Will's vocals sound amazing. I love the debut. Cody is just a fantastic album. Sure, it's a bit more typical to like early Dark Throne and that kind of sound. But I like that sound a lot. So, yeah, I love this album. It doesn't push the boundaries of anything, but it doesn't need to. Just solid, good black metal. And I like it for that. So, it's coming here in number three. Number two. Mm, do I change it around? I'm very tempted to change it around. You know what? I fucking will. Sano Jesse is number two. This is this could be a coin toss. This is like Invartnags, but better, in my opinion. It's like a better version of it. It's catchy with the songs, but it has more variety in the album. Like the first half of the album is very to the point in your face. Fast, thrashy. The second half is more on the melodic side, more longer songs, uh, atmospheric, and it just blends together so well. It's a good yin and yang. It's the perfect album for a newcomer. My number one isn't, but this is a perfect album for a newcomer. It has all the styles of the band in. Production isn't too clean, but it's not too raw. It's just fucking perfect. It's a perfect album, and it's just better in every way. I love it. But you know me. I like my doom. Number one is Ani Yosa. This is the filthiest album. This is the most black sheep. I know the other one was a black sheep. This is more of a black sheep. Longest songs on this album. There's only a couple of songs, like five songs. So you know they're good. Um, no fast to the point. Well, there's a couple of fast ones, but mostly doomy, sludgy. It's a concept album about the black death. And it's very filthy. The vocals by Corvus just sound... Like, he's writhing around in filth. It has that atmosphere, and the atmosphere is all fucking palpable. The last song has that kind of rhythmic pulse at the end, kind of like some of my, my favourite bands that do that. Um, I love it. The album cover, filthy, everything, filthy. Love it. This is my favourite. But it is a coin toss between that and San Jose. Love them both, but for me, this takes the cake. Probably not for a lot of people, because a lot of people don't like slow so just ignore my number one and go for the others. But if you like some slow stuff as well, then this has you covered. So that's it. That's my Horner ranking. Uh, has it disappointed you? Hopefully. Let me know down below how you would rank them from your least favorite to your favorite. Uh, yeah, do that. Do that. Do that now. Let me know down below and I'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.